For most people living around Naples, the loud boom that shook Campi Flegrei this morning felt like the start of something big. Windows rattled, alarms went off, and for a second the whole town seemed to freeze. But what many don't realize is that this moment didn't appear out of nowhere. It's actually the latest chapter in a story that has been unfolding for over 20 years. Long before today's blast sent shockwaves across the caldera. To really understand what is happening right now, we have to look at everything that came before. This morning's quake is only one piece of a much larger puzzle. The Long Rising Ground Two decades of change. Campi. Flegre has been lifting slowly but steadily for more than two decades, making this unrest period the longest in modern history. While uplift gets a lot of attention today, it's important to remember that it didn't begin with the recent swarms or this week's tremors. It started long before many residents even noticed. Over these years, scientists mapped the underground structure and found that the caprock, the layer of rock that seals the hot fluids and magma below, is far weaker than it used to be. Parts of it have been eaten away by heat, steam, and chemicals. Some areas that were once solid are now fragile, cracked, or turned into clay. These discoveries include a one-kilometer vertical channel that may connect deeper magma to shallower zones, fresh fractures forming in the same places where earthquake clusters appear, zones where the caprock is shockingly thin, sometimes less than 100 meters, rock layers altered by heat, making them brittle and weak. This means the volcano does not need as much pressure as it did centuries ago to break through. The roof is simply not as strong anymore. Looking back in time, the 1538 Monte Nuovo eruption. Hundreds of years before modern instruments existed, Campi Flegre produced the Monte Nuovo eruption of 1538. This eruption didn't start with lava. It began with days of violent steam blasts that tore open the surface. The events leading up to that eruption were decades of slow, steady uplift, a sudden acceleration in the final months, loud, shallow earthquakes, cracks opening near the surface, steam-driven explosions finally, magma rising once the surface layer was weakened. What makes this history important today is the pattern. The same general steps, long-term uplift, followed by a sudden increase in shaking, are appearing again now. But the difference is that the rock above today's system is much thinner and more damaged than the rock that existed in 1538. That makes today's caldera more vulnerable. A quick detour. Why the 1980s don't match today? Many people compare the current situation to the uplift crisis of the early 1980s when Pozzuoli rose almost two meters and thousands of families had to evacuate. But there are several major differences. The 1980s crisis lasted three years. Today's has lasted 20. In the 80s, uplift stopped completely. Now it dips slightly and then speeds up again, something never seen before. Earthquake activity today is stronger and more frequent than almost any time except 1538. The total uplift now is greater than the 1984 peak. Because of all this, scientists warn that using the 1980s as a model is misleading. The conditions today are not the same. The hottest zone. Solfatara and Pisciarelli. When you look at maps of stress, heat, and quake activity, one area always stands out. Solfatara Pisciarelli. This is the most active part of Campi Flegre and the one that scientists worry about the most. Here's why. The ground is soft and altered, mostly tough, clay, and ash instead of solid rock. Roads keep sinking and cracking because the heat below is so intense. New fumaroles, steam vents, keep opening. Some buildings have warm walls and floors due to rising steam. Gas emissions are getting hotter and stronger. Temperatures in this zone can reach 170 degrees Celsius or more, and the rock becomes brittle like glass at around 200 degrees Celsius. This makes the area extremely fragile. This is also the part of the caldera where a phreatic, steam-driven explosion is most likely. Such an explosion doesn't need magma. 
All it takes is superheated water suddenly flashing into steam. What a phreatic explosion could mean. If a blast happened at Solfatara or Piciarelli, scientists say the effects could include rocks being thrown hundreds of meters into the air, ash rising several kilometers short, dangerous bursts of CO2 and H2S gases, repeated explosions for hours or days, a crater forming in the weak ground. Around 80,000 people live within the zone that could be affected. And if such an explosion removes part of the thin caprock, it could open a pathway that allows magma to rise quickly. Scientists estimate this possibility at around 15-30%, not guaranteed, but not impossible either. Now we arrive at the present, the swarms of 2025. After years of slow buildup, this year the activity began to accelerate again. For months, the area has been shaking almost every day. Dozens of microquakes happen each week, most between magnitude 1 and 2. Some are so shallow that people hear them as explosive booms. The most recent INGV weekly report confirms that ground uplift is 2.5 cm per month. 88 quakes were recorded in seven days. Fumaroles are hotter than before. Gas emissions are increasing. Deformation is continuous, with no sign of stopping earthquake lists from November 17th and 18 show the same trend. Small but frequent quakes. All shallow, all in the same sectors that are already weakening. And finally, this morning's boom. After months of continuous activity, the latest quake struck early this morning. It wasn't the largest quake, but it was one of the loudest. Residents said it felt like a cannon or an explosion beneath their homes. So we're in. Vesuvian Observatory confirms that it came from a very shallow depth near Via Antiniana, a place already known for softening asphalt and new steam vents. This boom is not a random event. It fits perfectly with the long-term pattern. Rising pressure, cracking rock-shallow quakes, increasing gas, accelerating uplift. Everything points to a system that is still evolving and still under stress. Where things stand now, when you put all the pieces together, the long uplift, the weak caprock, the rising temperatures, the new fractures, the non-stop quakes, and today's boom, the message is clear. Campi Flegre is not stable. It's active, it's changing, and it needs to be watched closely. Scientists cannot give exact predictions, especially after the 2009 L'Aquila legal case. That's why official statements sound careful and vague. But the emergency drills, new evacuation plans, and cautious warnings show that experts are taking this seriously. I'll continue following every update as it happens.